while talking about gastrointestinal ulcers we have already discussed the ulcers that are happening in our stomach in our small intestine and in our esophagus if you have not watched these videos and you want to upgrade your knowledge you can go to the channel and watch these videos and uh, now we are going to talk about ulcers that are occurring in the lower gi tract of our body that is in the colon region or the rectum region the problems that we are going to discuss in the upcoming videos are rectal ulcers colon ulcers inflammatory bowel disease and inflammatory bowel syndromes which include ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease so all these problems will be discussed here on this channel we will be discussing about the pathophysiology of these problems and some brief introduction of what are the medication options that we receive and at last we will be discussing about nutrition and dietary management of these diseases which is the most important part so to watch these videos stay tuned What's up everybody this is your nutritionist on the go Kavaldeep Singh Aujla from Erudite Nutrition. So before starting the video on rectal ulcers, colon ulcers, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel diseases, inflammatory bowel diseases, I want to give you a brief startup of what to expect. This topic that we have chosen now, uh, I have worked so many hours into this. The reason is we are going to be discussing all these problems all together because these are the problems of somewhat similar origin. But yes, there will be slight differences in the causes, in the symptoms and as well as in the dietary interventions. But since I have clubbed all these diseases together, it can be a bit confusing at times. So I don't want any of my viewers to be confused. Do watch the video in your pace, uh, whichever way you like. I have tried to bring out these videos in a PowerPoint presentation format for you guys. I will be going very slow in a very normal pace so that we do not leave any confusion but still even when I am discussing these topics with my students or with my patients a lot of time they get confused because of the similarities between causes and symptoms but anyhow all we have to do is make sure that we watch the full videos this series will be having five different videos in which we will be uh, we will be discussing from pathophysiology to treatment to dietary intervention and yes there is a diet chart for you guys at the end of these videos so do not skip any video watch the video till full so that you have the topic in your grip. so many instances i have noticed that these problems related with the lower gi tract especially the inflammatory bowel diseases they are divided into two phases if we have to categorize them one is acute and one is chronic acute means the problems that are uh, in your body from you are suffering from a problem within the last three month period chronic is when you have a problem for more than three months usually rectal ulcer problems are easily dealt with and are mostly acute but severe ulcerative colitis is a problem which when i talk to my patients i notice 80% of the time those are chronic issues why are these problems becoming chronic because symptoms which are being shown in ulcerative colitis actually are quite manageable to look forward so what we do is we just take whatever medicine is available for our, for our near, nearest chemist shop or pharmacy or we go to a local practitioner or a general practitioner or our family doctor but the problem is that those medicines are not working for you is because you need a gastroenterologist you need a specialist you have to consult a specialist for that number two you have to get a colonoscopy done an endoscopy for the upper gi ulcers and a colonoscopy for the lower gi ulcers since colonoscopy is a little bit touchy subject for some people people are not easily coming forward for such types of interventions or procedures but the right way to proceed with these problems can only be happening after the result of your colonoscopy so guys your health is the most important factor do not take chances with that always consult your doctor if you are having any type of chronic issues related with your gut so guys let's start off with our presentation on rectal ulcers and ulcerative colitis along with irritable bowel syndrome or irritable bowel disease 
and uh, it is also known as inflammatory bowel disease or inflammatory bowel syndrome. Uh, the presentation is made by your very own nutritionist on the go, Kavaldeep Singh Ochla, and uh, presented to you by Erudite Nutrition. So let's talk about rectal ulcer. So first of all, let's see what is the rectum region. Uh, if you can see in this area, uh, this is our large intestine, okay, flowing this is the part where our food travels at last before defecation from the body and this last bend that we can see over here in a zoomed manner uh, this is called as the rectum so if due to any reason there are some sorts of ulcers or sores in this region then it uh, those are called as rectal ulcers so the reasons will be discussed in this presentation. So uh, the rectum is the muscular tube connected to the end of the colon. Stool passes through the rectum on its way out of the body. So whenever one or more open sores or ulcer develops in the rectum, it is called as a rectal ulcer. So what are the symptoms? What are the symptoms if a person is suffering from rectal ulcers? Uh, see, the first of all symptom will be constipation, okay. Then there can also be some incidence of rectal bleeding. That means fresh, uh, bright red color of uh, blood mixed with stool when we pass our uh, stools. So we can also observe some color. It is called as melina also. Uh, straining during the bowel movements. This is a consequence of uh, constipation. Pain or feeling of fullness in your pelvis. Uh, when you're suffering from constipation, your most of the bulk of your stools will be collected in your large intestine. So you can feel some type of uneasiness in your pelvis region. Uh, a feeling of incomplete passing of stool. So even despite going to the loo, you do not feel that satisfaction. You don't, do not feel that relief that you should be feeling. So this is alongside one of the symptoms. Passing of mucus from your rectum, uh, our whole GI tract, our intestinal tract is layered with uh, a mucus layer for protective reasons and other functions. Sometimes this mucus is uh, passed out of your body along with the stool. There will be a visible difference in the texture and color, okay, which can be noticed. Fecal incontinence is the next symptom, that means the inability to pass stool, okay, so fecal continuance and last is rectal pain that is we actually do feel a pain before or after passing the stools uh, we can feel pain directly in the back in the rectal region of our body so these are the common symptoms so what are the causes of rectal ulcers um, this might sound a little bit confusing with the symptoms but the causes and symptoms can be interlinked together for example first one is uh, constipation uh, our large intestine has the tendency of absorbing as much as water content from the stool okay so this region over here this region of region over here has the property of absorbing uh, most of our fluids so the more time the food is going to take passing through this region more amount of water will be sucked out of the food that we ate resulting in hardening of stools due to loss of a lot of water so when this hard stool is passed it impacts the layers that those are inside so uh, if we can just focus on this bit so imagine uh, there is hard consistency of stool and when it will be passed through the rectum, it is going to damage the interior walls of our rectum because this skin is very sensitive and a hard stool can cause damage or lacerations or wounds when passed. So constipation can lead to hardening of stools which can lead to rectal ulcers. Second is straining during the bowel movement. Again, uh, this is connected with constipation. And number three is stretched rectum or rectal prolapse, a very dangerous condition uh, where the muscles of our rectum, uh, they lose their strength and uh, even sometimes the rectum can also be seen coming out of the body cavity. Pretty graphic actually. Uncoordinated tightening of pelvic floor muscles. 
uh, that slows the flow blood flow to the rectum so this can also be a cause if we are not having proper pelvic floor muscle blood circulation which can also uh, affect in slowing of rectum blood some people uh, are on bed rest so they do not move much that can cause constipation or this uh, slow blood flow of uh, uh, pelvic floor muscles or some people are very uh, sedentary lifestyle so they, they do not do any sorts of physical activity so that can also be a reason for that and uh, the last reason for electrolyte ulcer can be some some type of uh, inflammatory bowel or ulcerative colitis these terms these diseases will be discussed in the later half of this presentation so till now what we have learned is that if there are some wounds and lacerations in the rectum region they are called as ulcer and the number one symptom that we observe is constipation and rectal bleeding okay along with some other issues also and last is what are the causes so again in the causes also uh, exertion a lot of straining during the bubble movements or constipation is the major issue behind rectal ulcers